It's official, Taylor Swift and Joe Alwyn have broken up. Though neither have commented on the news yet, rumors have been swirling with sources close to the couple stating that the split had already happened weeks ago. So what does this mean for Taylor's eras and the new era of her personal life that she's embarking on? The sadness that has met this news comes from the fact that this one felt like the one. Taylor has always dotted her music with Easter eggs about the men coming and going in her life, but Joe has been firmly entwined in the Taylor cinematic universe since the reputation era. Not a special guest, but a main character. As she moves on from what she believed was a permanent union, it's a difficult experience many can relate to, especially in this era of life. So how do you start again in your 30s, when maybe you and everyone else expected you to be done with dating and new romantic experiences? Theoretically, when you're in the lavender haze, you'll do anything to stay there. Here's our take on the end of the Taylor and Joe era and where she might go next. Taylor Swift is in the middle of her Eras Tour, a three-hour-plus career retrospective that takes each of her albums as its own unique era, with its own unique style, color palette, and theme. But within those eras, we could say that there's been a wider Joe Alwyn era, one that started with reputation, lasting through to now. What was so interesting was how immediately different this era felt from that which preceded it. The reputation era was Taylor almost leaning into being the villain, metaphorically killing off the old Taylor and crafting a record all all about drama, fame, and conflict. It also included a number of love songs to Joe. When Lover came out, it was clear she was in a different space, exemplified by the sunny, summery lightness of London Boy, the song most explicitly about Joe and their burgeoning relationship. Was this supposed to be all in one day? And if so, how does Taylor Swift get around? Do, like, do you have an oyster card? This is supposed to be over the course of three years. This signaled a period of creative evolution for Taylor. Her pandemic-influenced albums Folklore and Evermore were by the same score a return to her storytelling songwriter roots, but also a push beyond her comfort zone. The vulnerability that she showed in the lyrics on Lover was now present in the music, too. She was more stripped back than ever, and Joe was now not simply a character in her songs, but a collaborator in her creative process. William Bowery is Joe, as we know. Exile was crazy because Joe had written that entire piano part. Comparatively, this era has lasted a long time. Lover, Folklore, Evermore, and Midnight's may all be distinct albums, but they each have this touch of the new Taylor about them. The exhuming and re-recording of her older records also happened during this era and have seen her push beyond simply being a songwriter. After directing the video for All Too Well, she's now developing her first feature as a writer-director. I like the idea of you picking him up and just kind of looking at him like warily and just watching him for a second and we'll film your close with that. All of these creative swings have Joe's fingerprints on them in some way. That's not to give him credit for Taylor's songwriting genius, but rather to illustrate how intertwined they became. You've written some of the saddest songs of your career we together. Write the What's going on? Songs. Often with artists, it's drama and sadness that are lionized as the great muses. But here, perhaps it was the safety offered by the stability of being in a long-term loving relationship, one that was rumored to be headed for the altar that allowed her to try all these different ideas and take these big swings. This could be really weird and we could hate this. Could we just try to see what it's like if we write this song together? By all accounts, their breakup was mutual and amicable, but the question still remains, what's next? Taylor Swift isn't the only high-profile woman now having to navigate this romantic re-beginning in the public eye. Emily Ratajkowski and husband Sebastian Bear McLaird abruptly split in 2022, and with them, there's a baby in the mix as well. But in talking about her breakup, we can begin to glean what this reset might feel like. Speaking to Variety, Emrata said, I'm newly single for basically the first time in my life ever, and I just feel like I'm kind of enjoying the freedom of not being super worried about how I'm being perceived. I really do think that I stayed in those relationships to be protective and like to not have to deal with what it was like to be single. Culture tells us that breakups are difficult at the best of times, but breakups in your 30s, particularly for women, are often seen as a completely separate kind of tragedy. We've talked about the 30 crisis before and how much of that is brought on by this cultural pressure to settle down and start a family. According to Match.com, most women meet their soulmates when they're 25. Taylor met Joe when she was 27, but still, you're often made to feel like you've hit a shoot and gone right back to square one, just when the finish line was in sight. But I don't want this to end. No, oh, I don't want it to end either. I can't believe this is gonna end. 
But isn't this attitude kind of old-fashioned now? The idea of meeting your partner in your mid-twenties and settling down in your thirties harks back to a day when women weren't afforded the freedoms they are now. Taylor and Joe's breakup will undoubtedly be sad and something they'll mourn, but the relationship may have simply run its course. That doesn't mean that the last six years of her life gets erased, or that those songs from that era get swept away. They may now be imbued with even greater emotion. Their life may be even longer. So rather than breakups in your 30s being endings, maybe they should be thought of as new beginnings. This might be the first time that a breakup really feels like it matters. But also it's the first time when you have the clarity and certainty of self to really see it from all angles, to reflect on the relationship and take what was good from it into who you become. We as fans might be wondering, where could she possibly go from here? But maybe that wondering should be imbued not with fear, but with curiosity. And maybe even some excitement. Taylor's Eras Tour is a celebration of her career, but you could also see it as an ending itself. Rolling Stone described it as a victory lap, so in that sense, she was already preparing for her next race. We're gonna be exploring the last 17 years of music that I've been lucky enough to make and you have been kind enough to care about. What's maybe quite exciting is that Taylor knows how to write a killer breakup album. ID's Tom George called Taylor's Red Gen Zers first big breakup album. In announcing the re-release of the record, Taylor wrote, Musically and lyrically, Red resembled a heartbroken person. It was all over the place, a fractured mosaic of feelings that somehow all fit together in the end. If you're gonna be in my life, I, I feel like there's a certain amount that comes with it that I can't stop from happening. And it's telling that amongst Swifties, All Too Well is perhaps the most beloved of Taylor Swift's songs, an almost operatic breakup narrative full of textbook Taylor flourishes that then took on a whole new lore when the 10-minute version was released, complete with short film accompaniment. Lindsay Zolads writes, All Too Well is about a young woman's attempt to find retroactive equilibrium in a relationship that was based on a power imbalance that she was not at first able to perceive. So rather than being simply about the breakup, it's about what you can learn from a breakup. The other thing about Red is that it's seen as a kind of transitional phase, from the country-tinged singer-songwriter to the stadium-filling pop artist, and the critical acclaim that emerged with 1989. Are we about to see a similar transition? We've seen artists like Rihanna and Beyonce approach their 30s and pause music altogether to move into other arenas. It's tempting to think of new phases like breakups as a spoke in the wheel of progress, but this doesn't fit with the Taylor we know. Yes, it's heartbreaking. Yes, it's unexpected. Yes, it's an ending. But it's a beginning to. Tonight we're going to be going on an adventure. One era at a time. The creative sparks that come from being an established artist in your 30s combined with Taylor's preternatural ability to capture and distill difficult emotions into her music means that whatever she does next, it could be her most interesting era yet. That's the take. Click here to watch a video we think you'll love, or here to check out a whole playlist of awesome content. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.